octopus balls with ginger. Look at this. It looks so hot. A little too hot. Konnichiwa. Welcome to Kyoto, Japan. This ancient city on the Japanese island of Honshu is one of the country's top destinations and offers a glimpse into over a thousand years of tradition, history, and culture. Tradition reigns supreme in Kyoto, which is home to over 2,000 Buddhist temples and Shinto shrines. The city's quieter atmosphere and more classic architecture make it a far cry from the bustling concrete jungle of Tokyo. It's also a phenomenal place to dive into Japan's diverse and complex food culture. In this documentary, we're exploring this wonderful and unique city. From the beautiful Arashiyama Bamboo Grove, to the beauty of the Kiyomizu Dera Temple Complex, to the famous tour gates of the Fushimi Inari Shrine. Along the way, we'll be learning about some of Japan's most popular foods, including takoyaki, yudofu, taco tamago, and gyoza. So get ready, because we're diving into this peaceful, traditional city right now. Let's go explore Kyoto, Japan. What's up guys, David Hoffman here from David's Been here in Kyoto, Japan. This was the capital of Japan for over a thousand years, from the 8th century up to the 20th century. And I'm here with my guide, and his name is Kosuke. Hi everyone, nice to meet you. I'm Kosuke, working as a tour guide in Kyo City. Let me show you around many temples and shrines. We're gonna go to two temples. So we're going to this temple, then we're gonna eat next to a beautiful shrine, the most famous shrine that everybody takes photos of on Instagram. The one with the red, like, little doorways, right? Many red gates. Red gates. Yes. Uh, this is a temple called the Komyoin Temple, known for beautiful Zen garden. So as you get inside, you see the rock garden with many, many maple trees. I mean, the second I landed in Kyoto, it felt like a different world from Tokyo. It like, Tokyo is just skyscrapers, concrete, lots of people. Yes. Kyoto feels quieter. I know there's a lot of people here, but it feels quieter. Yes. And it feels very traditional. Like this is like, I didn't see this in Tokyo. <laughs> so this is a cherry, uh, cherry blossom, bloom in springtime. And especially we call this cherry blossom a uh, shidare cherry blossom. In English, uh, weeping. Weeping cherry blossom. This is a maple tree with no leaves this time, but they have very uh, red, small leaves in November. So when you enter any temple in Japan, take off your shoes and that goes the same with any apartment. If you go into anybody's apartment, they always take their shoes off and they have slippers. Okay, shoes off. There's no uh, train station around here, so it's hard to get here as a terrorist. So this is the Zen garden. As you can see, they have these huge rocks just coming out of the garden. And I love that like type of grass. Yes. It's like tiny grass. Oh, moss, yeah. okay, it's moss. The ground was covered by uh, moss, covered with moss. Represent beach, actually. Yes, wow. so they all have small details, actually. So the, you see the rocks here represent a mountain, mountain. And the white gravels you see here represent ocean. So they all see fine nature. And you don't find any fancy or elegant things inside of the Zen garden because people have to be uh, focused on the meditation. By the way, guys, you cannot step into the Zen garden. See this thing we're on right here, this wooden platform? This is the farthest you can go. That was actually raked by the head monk. Every week he rakes that. And then obviously just don't walk over there. It's really disrespectful. They will tell you something, so. One single block up Cypress tree. This one right here. Yeah, this one. Incredible. So not only got him. And here you can see the many picture. Sometimes winter goes like this. Wow. Uh, this is the coldest season. Uh, from January to March is the coldest season in Japan. And not only winter time, but also springtime. Uh, there's a couple of cherry blossom inside the garden and bloom in springtime. So you are now in the prey hall. This is a chair for head monk. He is reading Buddhism Bible every day in front of the statue of Buddha here. This is a statue of Buddha. It looks like made from copper or bronze, but actually this is made from cypress tree again. Yes, yeah, so it's carved out separately first and joined together like puzzle. We call the Yosei Nizukuri is an artificial method to make this uh, uh, statue of Buddha. And not only statue of Buddha, but also this ornament wow. are made from cypress tree as well. This place is amazing. I mean, this is so incredible. The detail that goes into this carving a cypress tree into all these different things. And also the floor over there. I couldn't believe that huge slab was carved from a cypress tree. 
Okay, so we saw it. Very beautiful temple. This is like a real old temple, 14th century, and the name is Komioin. Komioin Temple. Komioin Temple. So basically, we saw one temple, and we have 1999 to go. <laughs> no, I, I doubt. I won't even see maybe me, three more. Let me do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, have you done it? Two thousand? Ah, uh, most of it. Oh yeah. my God, that's a lot. But now let's go eat. I'm super hungry. I need to have some breakfast. Yo, we are now in uh, Shimi Inari Shrine. Shimi Inari Shrine. Uh, one of the busiest sites in Kyoto. 7,000 people come visit here every day. And on the new year, even local people come visit here to pray the prosperity of their business. And I saw 1 million people here on the January 1st. 1 million people came here on January 1st. And this is the most um, Instagrammable spot in all of Kyoto and probably in all of Japan, the Red Gate. Before we go into the shrine, we're first gonna stop here at the food market. I'm very hungry, I just had a small bento box at 6.30 in the morning on the bullet train, so I am starving. Takoyaki. Takoyaki. Yes. I like it. That uh, octopus ball. Octopus ball, that's something we're gonna try right now. Octopus ball, oh I can't wait. I can smell the food, the aroma in the air is just amazing. Oh, look at that. Octopus balls. <gasps> look at that. Incredible. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> So they put butter and octopus, and they also put uh, red ginger and cabbage. And they cook it about uh, 15 minutes, and they just flip it to make it a uh, round shape. I mean, we just saw his the whole process. I mean, he put a bunch of battery, like basically, like purees it there, puts it here, then he puts the frozen octopus into it, then he puts, uh, I'm sorry, it's ginger, red ginger, and cabbage, and cabbage, so red ginger and cabbage. Then he puts some more batter, so he fills it off completely. And that's it. We're gonna try it now. You ready? Let's go. Okay, so the first thing we're trying is takoyaki. Octopus balls with ginger. Look at this. Oh my god. This is crazy. It looks so hot. Mmm. A little too hot. Big octopus. Some mayo. Like ponzu sauce? Is that ponzu or is that no, soy? Not ponzu sauce, it's uh, just original sauce. So the original takoyaki. sauce? I would say takoyaki sauce. That's takoyaki sauce? Yes. Oh man, it's very mushy. Oh, it's like falling apart. The batter is still like super hot. And you said this is bonito flakes, right? Bonito flakes? Yeah. It's a little too hot right now. <laughs> I think I'm gonna let it cool down for a bit, but mm -hmm. it's basically like a nice batter. Mm -hmm. It's a little soft. It's not like too crunchy at all. It almost feels like slimy in the middle. And a big, huge octopus. Wow, I mean, it it's almost feels like, like creme brulee inside, like a very mushy. Mmm. I love the bonito on top. Oh my God, this is amazing street food. I can't eat six, but I can eat three. I'm just gonna let it cool down though. I think I burned my gums like a little too much right now. It was incredible. Mm. Ooh, what a snack. Mmm. Takoyaki sauce is amazing. Yeah. I feel like the mayo in it, because it has to be mayo, that little that little like white sauce. White sauce, yeah. Has to be in the bonito flake. Oh, look at how it falls apart. It just falls. Oh, it fell. Mm. Mm. So next up, we're going to get some tofu steak, which is basically a tofu skewer. What he does is he cooks it a little bit, right, on the skillet. Then he puts it onto a plate. And then he puts like some wasabi, and you put different sauces on it. Very good, I love it. My favorite food is real nice here. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. You didn't tell me that. So, if you guys don't know, tofu is a speciality here in Kyoto. I was gonna actually get one of those crab sticks, but he was telling me it's fake crab, so I don't wanna go fake crab. I like this. This looks amazing. What else is he putting on? He's putting like some pork? Is that ham? Or is that like bonito? Seaweed and bonito. Oh, seaweed and bonito with a nice sauce? Ooh, that looks yummy. We're, sh we're sharing it, we're sharing it, yummy. Right on the side. Is that too little? Too little. All right, so we got some tofu steak. It looks incredible. We got tofu, we got bonito flakes, we have seaweed, we have some uh, ponzu sauce, right? Yeah. And then we have some like, it looks like sriracha and it looks like ginger. You want one? Yes, please. Oh, so you grab one, I grab another one. Okay, like that. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. mm. fried tofu. That's in pride. Yeah. I love the crispiness of the bonito flakes. Mm -hmm. but a little, 
Mm. The seaweed gives a nice taste to it. Like very like the sea, you know? Yeah, it's a good combination. Great combination. Yeah. But the problem is you have to get in here and really try to get some of this flakes, put it on top. Let's do it, my friend. I'm gonna drink this thing. <laughs> Let's do it. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. Mm. The manito alone. With the ponzu? How did everything? This costs 400 yen. The, the takoyaki costs 500 yen. So far, we spent nine dollars. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, this is a gyoza. Gyoza? Yes. See? Oh my god. For fried. Chicken skin, chicken skin dumpling. So this gyoza was wrapped with uh, chicken skin. Wrapped with chicken Wrapped with chicken skin. Yes. Okay, I think we'll finish with that. Let's get a small. Yeah, I give you. You get it for me? Okay, perfect. So we're gonna have some chicken skin dumplings I've never tried before. And besides just food stalls, as you can see, there's so many of them. I mean, there's not that many. I mean, I think there's like seven or eight. Besides this, is also right in front, a lot of souvenir shops selling like a bunch of different things. This is really cool. I actually bought one of these in Japan town. <laughs> I would love to take this home. I don't know why I would love to do that, but I mean, it's Japan, right? <laughs> what is it called? Chicken skin dumplings? Yeah. This chicken looks... skin gyoza, gyoza. Oh, sorry. This is chicken skin gyoza. Wow. Cheers, my friend. Cheers, cheers, cheers. 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 <laughs> oh, wow. It's the best gyoza I've ever had. My favorite. The best, the yeah. best. Because of that the chicken alternate. skin. Because chicken skin, yeah. yeah. Chicken skin really changes, changes the whole texture. Texture, yeah. Fatty, really fatty. Really, yeah. Go ahead. That's it, me? Yeah, so the chicken skin gyoza costs 300 yen so for three. So it's basically 100 yen per one. So one dollar per each. Not bad. It's a dry persimmon. Persimmon. It's the most, uh, most popular uh, fruit in Japan. One of yeah? the most popular. Can I have one? Oh, wow. It's like... It's almost like a fig. It's like a fig? Mm -hmm. This is so freaking good. Mm. So, it's not just that little section. This thing continues for a while. Now, it's like even more food. I'm really full though, so I don't know if I can eat this. I mean, let's keep going, dude. Let's keep going. It's too much food. Chopsticks, like super fancy chopsticks. We got eggs, we got some mochis here, more souvenir shops. I mean, and it's packed and he's telling me this is nothing. This is nothing. And these are like no Japanese people here. Mainly people from Asia, other places. If you've been watching me for a while, you know that I collect masks. In each country I visit, I buy masks for my wall. So I decided I'm gonna buy these two. This one, which is really cool. And this one. Each one is 2,000, so each one is 20 US dollars. So $40 and I get it. So it's not paper mache, it's fiber. So it's a little harder and hopefully it makes it home. And uh, yeah, thank you my friend, thank you so much. 4,000, here's the 5,000 I gave him. Thanks dude, that's great. My pleasure. Man, beautiful. The shrine, just so many colors. Oh, there's, there's more masks, there's way more masks over there. <laughs> okay, now we are going to walk uh, Tori Tonos, Tori Tonos, which is the most popular site in this shrine. Uh, when I was small, it wasn't very popular actually. Uh, after the memoir of Geisha is American film, uh, this shrine became very, very popular. So here's where the gates start, and from here to the top of the mountain, there's 10,000 gates. 10,000. Over 10,000. So, how do you, you just keep going until you see no one? So, you can get some photos? <laughs> oh my god, this is insane. Whoa, look at this. Okay, like I said before, each one of these was donated by a businessman. And here on the left side, that is the name of the company. And over here on the right side, you can see that's the date that it was built. So these in the beginning are the oldest. Okay. Because these gates are made from cypress tree again. So they last only 30 years. So every 30 years, factory people replace to old one to new one. Yes. And if you pay extra money, you can continue. If you don't pay it, you have to pass the space to the someone who waiting for it. It's like real estate. <laughs> gate real estate. I like it. I like it. Dude, this is gorgeous. This is like amazing. So we're gonna walk the smallest gates from now on. And this is the cheapest one. So the price of the gates will be changed depends on size. So this is the smallest, which is the cheapest. About 2,000 US dollars. Boy, why don't you buy it? <laughs> and what about the other ones? Uh, about uh, 10,000 dollars. Wow. Dude, this is amazing. All right, we just exited the first section and this this other road right here, that's to go back down. But if you want to continue going up, 
here's like another five or six thousand right there and that's two hours to go back up two hours round trip right yeah it's two hours so one hour up one hour down in shape of fox face so as you buy this wish board you have to draw fox face first and then you can write down your wishes and with your home address home address to let God know where they are living to get prosperity or something. So there's only 10,000 gates, right? So what happens is people who really want to donate, what they do is they'll buy a small gate like this one, which only costs 2,000 yen, so like 20 US dollars, and they put it in front of the holy rock. So as you can see, there's a lot of them are here. I think there's like maybe a hundred just stacked up on top of each other, and the holy rock is right behind. Really cool, I mean, I think I'm gonna buy one and take it home. Right here is like a good luck rock. So you gotta think, okay, this thing is heavy or not. So when you hold it, if it's heavier than you thought, that's bad luck. I thought it wasn't that heavy, now it's heavy as hell. <laughs> I love it. It's just, it's gorgeous, man. This is like... 15 years old, 15 years old, 15 years old. Oh, so, oh, so you know, you can. Oh, that's very new, yeah, yeah. Hey, you can tell, the ones that have like fresh paint are brand new. Oh, I love the oxygen. It's so much air up here, you know? Because we're on the mountain. Yes, yes. Wow, this, one, this one's like really old. Yeah, I'm about 20 years old. 20 years old, wow. All right, guys, so we explored two amazing temples. The first one was very traditional, old school, 14th century temple. And then we came here to this shrine and visited the food market. A lot of street food there. There's easily like 40, 50 different varieties of food. I really love the tofu. Did you like it? Yeah, tofu. my favorite as well. And the gyoza, the chicken, gyoza the chicken, uh, chicken skin, chicken skin gyoza. Yeah. That was so delicious. Even the first one we tried, the, the octopus balls. The octopus ball was amazing. It was Did amazing. Like it? It was yes, amazing. It's our snack. It's our snack. Traditional snack. So it's traditional in Kyoto, right? Yeah. So you can find it because I didn't try it in Tokyo, but I tried it here. So yes. Oh my god, it was so good. It was so juicy, so filling. And yeah, we had so much food, and then we came up here into the shrine. We saw the ten thousand gates. I mean, we didn't go to the very top. I think it's a little too much. I mean, I have very limited time. If you really want to see Kyoto correctly, I suggest at least three full days, and I only have a day and a half. So, but yeah, I mean, this is easily like a three hour journey here yeah. to do it all. But yeah, guys, I hope you love this video. And if you did, give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment below. And when you come to Kyoto, definitely look up this guy. Yes, He's the dude. best guide on the planet. Yeah. I was born here, I'm Kyoto local, so I know so many sites. So <laughs> let me know in time. <laughs> hey, Kyoto son, Kyoto son. <laughs> And subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. I'll see you in the next travel food adventure in Kyoto, Japan. What's up guys, David Hoffman here from David's Bin here in cold Kyoto, Japan. Today I'm here with my friend Kosuke and we're gonna go to the market. This is like a traditional fish market. What's the name of it? Uh, Nishiki Market. Nishiki Market. Nishiki Market. Yes. And where is it in the city? Uh, we are in the downtown area in Kyoto and this is the market, most popular one. And then people call this market Kitchen of Kyoto since we have many traditional food. Traditional food. Traditional food. So yes. what, what are some things that we're gonna see here? Seafood and dry food. Many uh, crazy small octopus uh, you can see. Okay, yeah. so more octopus. They love octopus here in Kyoto. Yeah, like, you guys love, love it. We love, I can eat every day. Every okay. day? Yes. Awesome, me too. <laughs> Let's go inside the market. Dry seaweed. Dry seaweed. seaweed. It's really good for your calcium, right? No. Dried seaweed. Mmm, nice. Okay. With sesame seeds? Can I have some more? <laughs> it's so good. Arigato. Small crabs. Yeah. That's amazing. Favorite. Like tiny crabs. Yeah. Are they crunchy? Sure. Ah, really crunchy. And then this is the seaweed. Yeah, seaweed. 1,100 for a bag like yeah. this. That's amazing. That's a deal. Yeah, good deal. Thank you, my friend. Here, I'm going to try a very small crab. He gave me like half the crab, though. That's a little crunchy. Has this like orange tint to it. Like almost like little seeds. Oh my god. <laughs> Mmm, delicious. Yeah, good challenger. Mmm. There's a nice, like, sweet taste to it. Almost like a honey with seeds, but the crunch is outstanding. And these are raw eggs? Oh, it's raw. It's not seeds, it's raw. Yeah. But it has, like, some delicious sweetness to it. Yeah, the taste is like... Scallop. Scallop. Dry scallop. Mmm. As I said, we have many dry food in Kyoto. Mmm. Chewy. Very chewy. Very chewy. Very dense. Mm. Dense. A little hard to get down, but it's good. 
I like it. Man, I can eat everything here. <laughs> Everything's so good. Zenboshi. Arigato, arigato. The bamboo shed. Bamboo shed. Bamboo shoot. Yeah, pickled bamboo shed. We uh, love to have a bamboo shed, actually. And as you uh, order ramen, you always find bamboo shed on the ramen. Bamboo shoot. Mmm. Nice, like moist crunch. Moist crunch. Yeah. Moist, because it's a little wet. Mmm. Delicious. Yum. <laughs> and I love it that every time you eat ramen, they give you a bamboo shoot. Mmm. So fresh. It's like very earthy. Dude, I'm gonna buy one. No, I'm gonna steal it. No, I'm joking. <laughs> but how long is it? Uh, 1200 feet. That's it? Yeah, that's it. Wow. You even can see the end. You can, yeah, you can definitely see the end. But there's so many shops. I mean, it never ends. Right here, we got some souvenir shops, more souvenir shops. So we just passed that little area. And that was like seafood, but dry seafood. So here we have a very tough section. There's even carp. Do you know koi fish? They're selling the uh, carp here. And the eel, and not only eel, but also intestine. Also born of the eel, you can have it for your calcium. Here, there's, there's live animals. Um, and they're also cooking animals, but there's also live animals on the bottom, like in tanks. And we have a lot of things on skewers. Sparrows. Sparrow, yeah. wow. A little bird on a stick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Should I try that? Mm, no, no, I've never tried. <laughs> All right, I won't try that. Yeah, <laughs> too hard. I mean, I want to try something though. Eel inside. Eel inside. Well, what's that? A bone. Bone of the eel. Bone of the eel. <laughs> Whoa. It's a crunchy, right? It's like a cracker. <laughs> I mean, you know, you know what it tastes like? It tastes like a worm. Like a freaking worm. Awesome, I think I'm gonna try one of these. Yeah, sure, um, we have different sizes. If, if you wanna go for a small one, you can just go for a small one. I'll probably go for a small one, yeah. Small one. So it's just a... Uh, That'll be, the smallest we have is 250, is that 250? all right? Yeah, yeah, I don't think I need to eat a big one. All right guys, so I'm gonna try an octopus with a quail egg inside. Look at this, what is this? <laughs> go for one go. Yeah. Okay. Oops. Very tasty. Soy sauce with sake, quail egg. That is delicious actually. Thank you. I love it. Mm. I've never had this before. Octopus. It looks very exotic, but it's like standard here. People love octopus here. And this one was small. So this one was 250. You can actually go for the bigger one. 500 for that. Look at that. It's a monster. This that, that was so good. Is it good? Yeah. Th that was like so, so good. <laughs> As yeah. It looks a little crazy. Yeah, it's yeah. a little like, like you never really see an, an octopus on a stick. That's scallops? <gasps> no way. That is giant. Here we have rice cake with sweet soy sauce. Oh my god. Mmm. <laughs> it's almost like a mochi. It's a little gooier. Doesn't have the same taste as a mochi though. Just the consistency is similar to a mochi. Mmm, the sweet soy sauce is so delicious. Mmm. Like this is so freaking good. It's almost slimy. Like it's it's gooey, but it's almost slimy. Mmm. Wow. That is filling though. It is like, it's it's not too sweet, but at the same time, like, the sauce is sweet. sweet the yeah. sauce is sweet. Yeah. The inside is not so sweet. <laughs> it's, it's almost like a, a gooey mochi. Gooey mochi. More than mochi. Gooier. Is that, this, is, this is a baby sardine. Mini flavor with the baby sardines here. Okay. We love to put on the rice. So many people have the baby sardine at the fridge at their house. All right, so basically this is like a sampler of sardines and kelp. I'm gonna try a little bit right here. So put it on my hands, right? Yeah. Little sardines, little red. Oh, they look nice. Mmm, very nice. Salty, dry. Got a nice piece of kelp. It's a little too sticky. Mmm, super sticky kelp. Oh, I see how that can go really good with rice. Mm. Right. Or like wrap around it. Mm, yum, 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 yum. Here you see fish here. It's a carp, koi fish. And the other fish you see here is a herring, herring fish. It's a herring fish wrapped with kelp. Okay, so this entire shop is dedicated to bonito skin. So many variations, as you can see right here. This one looks like, uh, like a little lighter. That one's darker. Those are completely dark, like super dark. I don't know what they're doing with them, but I'm sure they're mixing with something to make it darker, right? Wow, so you just get a bag here like popcorn, mm -hmm. and then you just eat bunny up skin. <laughs> Do we buy a bag? No, I'm good, I'm good. This is your shop, you like uh, sake a lot, so you can try sake here. So th yeah. this is a sake shop? Yeah, this is a very traditional local sake shop. Whoa, so many sakes, like how many sakes are there here? Oh, over 100. Over 100 different yeah. varieties? 
So you can try here? They allow you to try? Okay, let's try some sake. Okay, so we're about to try some sake. Mm, that's really good. A little strong. Yeah, it is. A little strong. Wow. This is sake from Kyoto in the South area called the Joyo area. She let us have a sample before. This time we got a beer cup, but we paid for it. We paid 400, which is basically $4. Oh, oh, thank you, my friend. Arigato, arigato. Wow, this is delicious. It's like, it's dry, but it's also a little fruity. Very cold. I love cold sake. Even in this freezing weather, I love cold sake. And yeah, guys, give it a try when you come here. I mean, trying sake in Kyoto. Kyoto is one of the most famous places in the entire world for sake. Please look at the white strawberry here. I'm sure you've never seen white strawberry in, the, in your country, but here in Japan, it's pretty popular. Yeah. But a little bit pricey though. White strawberries? I've never seen this. That's crazy. It's called Nara Strawberry Lab. Yeah. And it's popular here. Yeah. People, people like this. Yeah, people love to have it. I gotta say, it's a very interesting market between, you know, souvenir shops. We got, whoa, chopstick shop. We got a shoe shop. Right here we have literally a fish market where there's actual fish and they're cutting them up right there. And then right here we have an egg shop. I mean, it just doesn't end the amount of things that there are here. So many different shops, so many things to eat. I mean, I would try way more things, but I'm already getting really full. I've been eating back to back to back to back. And uh, yeah, man, I'm like looking, what else? Oh, more sake. I don't know if I haven't told you guys, but I love mochis. I'm gonna try this mochi. It's called Sakura Mochi. Pink mochi wrapped in a salted cherry leaf. Wow, 180 yen? Okay, let's try it. So this shop is like, all they do is mochis, right? And they also do like a grill mochi right here on the grill. It's like a little barbecue mochi. It's a green tea mochi. She's just cooking it. Oh my God, I'm trying two mochis back to back. I can't wait. That looks delicious. Pink mochi wrapped in a salted cherry leaf. Mm -hmm. Really salty. In the middle we have a little bit of red beans. Always red beans in mochis. Mm. This one's actually a little more grainy. It's like a super sticky polenta in a way. Oh yeah, super yummy. Mm. All right guys, let's try this thing. Whoa, I never had grilled mochi. Oh my God, I love it. It has this little like smoky taste to it. Mmm. Really slimy. That's what I love about Asia. So many like slimy, gooey desserts. Oh, mochis are good. They're really filling. Oh, and it costs 170 for each. It's talking about a dollar seventy each. Here we have another fish market, but this one's awesome because it has sea urchin, huge oysters. Look at these oysters. They're just giant. Wow, we got some ginormous snails right here. Got some roe. Oh, so good. Everything looks so good here. Even some like seafood brain. The crazy thing about this market is that like, I literally got full within the first 10 minutes. Everything else is just like too much, but it just doesn't stop. Like, and there's so many unique things here. This market's actually very short in terms of markets in Japan, but it's really big because the shops are just like 10 feet wide. So you easily have like 1200 shops here. I don't know if that's the exact number, but it looks like there's a lot of shops because I mean, I just passed so many places. Everything is so delicious. So if you're looking for seafood, definitely visit this market. All right, I think I ate too much, but luckily I've been walking it off. Like we went through the whole entire market, as you can see, that is the exit of the market. And we're gonna go now to the bamboo forest, one of the most visited attractions here and one of the most stunning places to visit in Kyoto. Hey man, you ready? Yeah, of course I'm ready. I can take it to anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> We are already in our Ashiyama area, uh, known for bamboo forest and monkey park and a couple of temples. I know not many tiaris at the local sites. Let me show you. So maybe we should visit the temple first. Is that okay with you? Yeah. Yeah. It's only 10 minutes away from here. And on the way we go, uh, you can see the many souvenir shop. We call Otagi Nembutsuji Temple. Otagi Nembutsuji. Otagi is the name of this mountain. And Nembutsu means a reading Buddhism Bible because the founder of this temple was reading Buddhism Bible all day. So people named this temple, Otagi Nen Buddhist Temple. So it costs 300 yen to enter the temple. And we have to go all the way up. Oh, wow, look at this. 
It's incredible. What is this? Uh, we call it this is a Rakan deity. Their name is a Rakan. It's a student of Buddha. But for this temple, they made up uh, this statue with very unique style. So you see the many statue with a different pattern and different looking. Then here's over 1,000 statue you can see. <laughs> Let me show you my favorite Buddhas here. He's got surfing board. Surfing. Surfboard? Yes, I think the guy made up this uh, statue, loved to do surfing, so he made up the surfing Buddha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, right. So many, look, I mean, you have a huge row right here. Down there, you have infinite amount of statues. You said a thousand, right? One thousand? Yeah, over one thousand. Wow. I mean, this place is amazing. I've never seen so many Buddha statues in my life. Wow, over a thousand. Look, they're just so beautiful. Some have surfboards, one, one guy has a baseball bat. Some are super fast, some are thin. Some are like, this one's like a twin. Uh, this one's face is hilarious. God, this is awesome, man. Wow, and it's a lot colder up here. Yeah, we are on the top of the mountain now, so. Ooh, it's chilly, colder. it's chilly. That one's awesome. Yeah. Man, it's so awesome. Hey, yes, thank you. My and, pleasure. And guys, there's no train up here, so you have to drive up here. Just contact him. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this, uh, it took about 10 years to complete all the stitches you see here and there was only 40 years ago there was only 40 years ago so you see the pretty new statues here with more than unique style and you said it's always like this always empty uh, all, always like this yeah but except except uh maple tree season there's many many uh, trees you see here are uh, maple tree uh bloom in uh, november so what an amazing temple oh you're gonna ring the bell <laughs> Oh! Woo. Okay, let's go to the bamboo forest. Okay, welcome to the bamboo forest. <laughs> you like it? <laughs> no, I love it. I love it. This, this is crazy. This is amazing. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. So this bamboo called Matake bamboo is known for very fast growing. Growing very, very fast. They grow uh, about like 60 feet in one month. In one month? Yeah, 60 feet in one month. <laughs> what? So basically, do they get cut down? Or yes. do you guys come down to eat, right? Yes, we have a bamboo shoot. That's bamboo good. shoot, okay, yes. exactly. Wow, dude, this is incredible. After they reach enough, they stop growing. So they don't grow anymore, and they live only five years. Only five years. And as they get old, their color will be more brown. So you see many green bamboos and brown bamboos here. So all the bamboos you see here are family, because they all connected with the only one bamboo root. Bamboo root underground. So they all family. This is only one organism. One organism. That's incredible. I had no idea. I didn't even know this place existed. I didn't know about this. This is awesome. Oh my god, it's so good. The air here is just like pure, you know? Yeah, yes. And it's it's getting colder though. Every second we're out here gets colder. <laughs> I think the sun's going down, so it's getting really chilly. And uh good luck trying to get a good Instagram photo. There's too many people here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they grow very aggressively. Right there? Yes. But we are very glad to have a, this wet sand, uh, I mean soil, <laughs> which, which, which will be the very important to grow uh, good bamboo. So today we visited one of the most delicious seafood markets in the world, the Nishka Market? Nishki Market. Nishki Market. Good pronounce. Yeah. yeah, I mean it was so good. So many diverse things, very unique to Japan. I mean if you're really interested in trying all these unique seafood dishes, you know, things on skewers, um, some things that are very like dry, yeah. some salty stuff. Rice cake. Rice cake. I like the mochi though. My, mochi. Yeah. The mochi is my favorite. Maybe, maybe maybe the octopus with the with the quail egg. Good choice. That was so wild. <laughs> and then we visited the temple and we saw those amazing Buddha sculptures. Over a thousand there, and that's one of the least visited attractions here because it's so far and it's hard to get to. Yeah, it's hard to it's get really there hard. by yourself. Yeah, because no train. No train. No train. No train. Yeah, but definitely a must visit. And then yeah, come to this bamboo forest. It really just takes like 20 minutes to see it. You just walk through here, and it takes like. Literally in 20 minutes you're done, right? You yeah. go forward and backwards. Yes. Well guys, if you love this video, give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below. <laughs> <laughs> and subscribe to my channel. Yeah. And definitely look them up when you're coming to Kyoto. Yeah. And we'll see you on the next travel food adventure in Japan.
What's up guys, David Hoffman here from David's Bin here in beautiful Kyoto, Japan. I'm here with my boy Javier from Miami who lives in Japan. And tonight we're gonna go eat some delicious conveyor belt sushi. In this country, there's many different chains. And which one are we going to tonight? We're going to a place called Kuda Sushi. And why do you like this one? Uh, it's just my favorite one, fresh uh, sushi. Uh, not, not really expensive. Yeah, it's a good place. So basically, each little roll, or like it comes with two rolls, it's a plate with two rolls, they cost like 100 yen each, yeah. which is like $1, so it's very cheap. And you can either get the one that's on the conveyor belt, or you can order from a tablet. Like, and people do that here because they think it's more fresh or fresher. Right. And what's behind us? Right behind us, we've got beautiful Kyoto Tower. Uh, get a nice view, you can go, there's an observatory, get to the top and get a nice view of Kyoto. They've also got some uh, light up displays here with some lights and water and some music. It's Nice, uh, nice little atmosphere, ambiance. And behind me, we actually have Kyoto Station, the biggest station here in Kyoto. It's one of the biggest stations in Japan. And we have to go into here right now and take the train or the subway and go to the restaurant because now we're going to walk 40 minutes in the cold. I don't want to do that. Right. Let's do it, dude. Let's, let's go. do it, let's do it. All right, so we're going to go all the way to the top of Kyoto, uh, Kyoto Station. And then uh, it's got some really nice views that uh, you can see the rest of the city and stuff like that. So he's saying basically we walk on a platform on top of the entire station yep. and then cross this whole thing. So that's the platform, that thing right there? That's it, yeah. Wow. Does it cost money or no? No, it's free. It's free? Yeah. Awesome. Wow. Yep. That's amazing. Yeah. So it's like a light show on, these, on this huge stairway. Yes. Dude, this, all the way this stairs is huge. Right? Huge. Yeah, this is a massive station. It really is. Yeah. A lot of people miss these things because uh, they don't really know about it. They're just like getting to wherever they need to go. They get here, they leave. Like yeah. I did this morning. Yeah, exactly. So. Wow. Yeah. That's beautiful. Tokyo Station is massive as well though. It's got like a huge population so a lot of people are there. At any given time there's a million people there. Yeah. But uh, here there's also a lot of people but it's interconnecting. But it's really really cold. Yeah. Like it's getting colder every second. The sacrifices you make for these videos. Oh wow man the view. Yep. yep. Holy. I don't know if it'll come out on the camera because it's tinted so we're gonna go. Go right? Yeah. Cool. And then there's a bunch of restaurants in here as well. Wow. So a lot of people think of like a station as just trains, but it's usually mixed in with some kind of shopping. It has uh, to be like commercial, well. right? Right, right, right. So this level is basically like restaurant row. Yeah, they, they usually got about two floors with different uh, restaurants. So you got here noodles, uh, tonkatsu, which is pork cutlet. You got some more like ramen and different kinds of things here. But this is where the uh, bridge connects us and we're going to walk across the, the whole station. Skyway. <laughs> Skyway, here we go. And then, so like, you know, you come up here with a bunch of friends and like you hang out and just talk and stuff like that, grab a beer. And <laughs> here? That's yeah, awesome. Sure. Yeah. So you can basically drink anywhere in Japan and yeah. there's no problem. Yeah, even on the trains. You just can't be belligerent and you drunk, obviously. Uh, you, you, gotta, you gotta control yourself, like you shouldn't get to that extreme, but people do get really, really drunk uh, to the point that they pass on the streets all the time. All right, so basically what we see here is Kyoto Tower. The view from up there is gonna be amazing, but this is really nice. And right here we have like a little interactive map. Well, not an interactive map, but it's basically just a map and shows you what everything is, but it's all in Japanese, so... That's not good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so next time you visit Kyoto, definitely check out Kyoto Station. Go up to the Skyway and get some incredible views. I'm sure during the day you have a better view because you know it's lit up. Right now all you can see is basically Kyoto Tower. But look at this, guys. Okay, dude. Are you ready for sushi? Let's go. Let's go. I'm too hungry. <laughs> So we came to Niho there's Station. There's a bunch of stuff, yeah, Niho Station. But there's like a whole bunch of stuff. You got a gold gym there, some coffee shops that are pretty good, and a bunch of little like smaller eateries around here. It's a shopping mall around here as well. Dude, I am beyond hungry. Yeah, let's go I am sushi. like so hungry. <laughs> this is gonna be like my second time having sushi on this trip. I can't believe how much food there is in Japan that's not sushi. Yeah. There's a crazy variety that's never uh, like showcased in any Japanese restaurant in the states like never you can gain weight if you know where to go so right now it's the option if you want a counter or if you want a table counter is going to be faster table is going to be a little bit better probably we need a table table yeah. well so it's a long wait if we want to sit down at a table it's going to be an hour and a half so what we're going to do is we're going to sit at the counter and that's like 30 40 minutes the counter is great it's going to be hard to film but it's fine <sighs> 40 minutes later, let's go. <laughs> it just flew right by. So we got a table, that's great. It's actually way better, man. 
awesome. I'm so happy. Oh, let's do this thing. Oh, this is amazing. Yes. And the way this thing works, actually, so these are the common ones, right? And each one's like 100 yen. And it's just like regular sushi. So basically sushi, what it is, in case you guys don't know, it's just like sticky rice, sushi rice, with a piece of sashimi. So, you know, eel, salmon, uh, what else? Tuna, shrimp, those are the types of sushi, right? And then we also have a tablet up here, and there we can select. There's like a hundred different ones. If you see one of these that you like and it's not here, just order it on the tablet, and then they'll ship it out to you on the top. You ready, bro? I am hungry. Let's eat some sushi. You should grab anything? You want to grab something? This one for sure. That one for sure? So basically, they've got a little number on the top of each little bubble casket thing, uh, and that belongs to each individual table. So if you try to grab it, it's not going to open. So you grab up here, you got your little cups for tea. So you can drink beer if you want, but usually the thing that's going to go really well with sushi is green tea. So you go in, you've got your green tea powder mix right here. Take that, you got your little scooper right here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Two nice little healthy servings. Put another one in here. Then you got the really hot water that comes out of there. there we go. Cheers. Cheers, cheers. It's really hot, so be careful. Oh my god, it's dizzy. Oh, too much. <laughs> clean our hands, right? I love this. I love this about Japan. You always have this to clean your hands. Every single time you eat, they give you something to clean your hands. A little wet towel. Okay, how do we start? Here we have salmon with melted cheese on top. So buttery and delicious, super soft. Whoa, he's going nuts here. So salmon with onions, nice. A little nice. bit of mayonnaise on it. No, I, I go with nuts and then I mix it, right? Okay. Yeah, I just mix, mix it, it. Up. Mix it in. Oh, it's the more. best. Oh my god. So salmon, mayonnaise, you got some onions. Mmm, very delicious. Got some nice tuna, some soy, wasabi. Mm. That's probably one of the best ones. Phenomenal. Yeah, the one that everyone loves the most. Minced tuna, look how good that looks. Oh, and then the bottom, you have the rice. I love doing like this. Mmm. Good. So right here we have some nice salmon, nice sticky rice. Oh, make that nice wasabi. Ooh, this you could put a lot of wasabi in this, bro. I can eat this all day. Mm. It's all yours, man. Oh my god. Too good. And this one's like a uh, egg, right? Egg, wasabi, soy. Mmm. Mmm. Not bad, right? That's oh, pretty good. Tastes almost like a tofu yeah. overnight. Love that one. How many? We're up to, we got four, six. Six? Six bucks? Dude, bring them all on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, they actually have bottles. Oh, okay. Different sakes. This is sake. Let's get beer. Yep. Two beers? You can either get the you know bottle beer, so it's basically self-service. Go back and get the bottle, or you can go pour it. They have a nice machine that like tilts the glass and it pours. I'm going this way for now. This thing is like hard to push. Okay, this, that one's the one with the cheese you want. So this is the regular sashimi ones with the rice on the bottom and just like a slice of fish on top. I'm game for everything. Like I'm game. Roa cucumber? Is that cucumber? Uh, it's a piece of cucumber. Very nice. And the next one? What's the next one? Oh, there's right there. uni. That's a uh, sea urchin. Oh, yeah. But it's I got a number it. on it. Oh, no. Yeah. Serious. To, Mi to Miami. Kampai. Kampai. Yeah. yeah, just super light. <laughs> there we go. It doesn't want to open. <laughs> right. And then it's here. Yeah. Get it? Yummy. What, what's this? Oh, that's uh, so good. That's the cheese again with the salmon. Look at that. We just have a nice spread of sushi, dude. Thank you so much, dude. This is amazing. Open that. Oh, little rolls, hand rolls. They're called a not nyaki. The yeah, thing is called like kampyo. Both of them came. Oh my god. Whoa. Okay. What do you want to eat? I'll grab this one first. That one looks amazing. Seaweed. Rice, you got soy right there, soy sauce. We do the wasabi, right? Let's grab a lot of wasabi. 
Just dump it in there like a boss. This is how I always do it. I've been doing it like this since I was eight years old, just mixing it. This is the one that's all that's me. That's all right? you. I won't. I don't really care much for the salmon rolls. Drop it in there like yeah. that. So what I love about this is that the roe literally pops in your mouth. Mm. I love the hio wasabi. Nice little crunch with the seaweed. Oh. Really good stuff. It's always been my favorite. That's why I came here. <laughs> <laughs> I need some drink. So next up we have... It's like a mix of salad. Uh, a salad. This is just so good. Mm. Got shrimp, avocado, mayonnaise, and onions. Yep. Look at that. Mm. I never had onions in my life. Yeah. First time I had ours. There you go. Now you gotta hit up anago. Anago? Anago is like very similar to an eel. This is conger eel with no bones. I love having the sticky rice mixed with all this wasabi and soy. Mm. That was incredible. Yeah. Different. Yeah. I've never had it before. Yeah. So that was just the same one we had before. It's a salmon, but they melted some cheese on it. Oh yeah? It's, yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, right there. Mm. Right? I really love this place. There you go. Whoa, what is that? Tofu sushi? It's pretty good. It's a sweet tofu. I like it. Whoa. One of my favorite ones. It's called Inari Sushi. Hmm. Wow. So it's fried tofu and in the middle, is rice oh my god look at that oh wow it looks very sweet like it, like it has honey or maple syrup sure doesn't have maple syrup though let's try this bad boy mm. a donut with rice mm. Mm. like honey rice and dough mm. and then this one wow so we got egg we have tuna we have scallions we have rice, and then we have nice seaweed, and this one I'm gonna dip into here. Nice, mmm, make this nice and yummy. Here we go, here we go. The best one, yoga exploding in your mouth, mixed with tuna, oh, I love that. Here in Kyoto, people love to have breakfast, like rice, with an egg. Straight up an egg, they crack it on top, and that's it. All right, we have 19 right here. Whoa! Look at that. What? You still need some more? I'm I'm good. I can do one more. One That's more. Right. We one gotta more. gotta balance it Let's out. Do one more. One Let's more. Do one. So I'm gonna finish this off. We have one more to go. We had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, nineteen. So basically, we had like. 38 different pieces of sushi in America that would have cost me one sushi roll. 20 bucks? Amazing. Mm. That one is freaking delicious. So you have to come with Kura Sushi when you come to Japan. It's a chain, it, you can find it all throughout the country. It's pretty amazing. You have the sushi coming in at the bottom, the conveyor belt. You can order from the tablet anything else you want, and it comes up here. And then you just stack them like this. And then, there's something else that's gonna happen. What are we gonna do here? You told me we put it in and we got a toy or something. So we're gonna put all the plates in here. Yep. Very nice. Oh. One by one, ready? Yep. So anime. <laughs> oh my God. What's gonna happen? This is crazy, dude. Ah, uh, you lost. <laughs> I lost? Yeah. No, why? Do I get another chance? Yeah, you get 10. Another you get 10? Okay, yeah. another chance. There you go. There you go. Come on, I want to win. I want to win. Huh? Again? How's it? Yeah. So basically, there's no way to win at this game. It's rigged. It's rigged. <laughs> so you, if, once you're done with 10, you can stack them in there, and that's it. Each one was a dollar. Pretty cheap. Fear was also cheap. I think it was like 300. Yeah. If you guys come to Japan, definitely come to the Conveyor Belt Sushi. It's amazing. If you love this video, give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below and subscribe to my channel. So I don't think I'm done. I don't think I want to get... Nah, I'm joking.
What's up guys, David Hoffman here from David's Been Here in beautiful Kyoto, Japan. This city is amazing. It's a little chilly right now, it is winter, and I ate so many good things today, saw incredible attractions, but right now what I wanna do is show you my apartment. I'm gonna give you an apartment tour. There's a really nice apartment right here, about a 10 minute walk from Kyoto Station. Kyoto Station is the main station here. It's one of the biggest stations in the country, train stations. When I left Tokyo on the bullet train, that's where I arrived. And I walked 10 minutes to here, and here we are. Let's go inside, follow me. No, I love this building, it's super nice. It's like really, really modern. As you can see right here we have like bike racks, really cool. So if you have a bike, you can just park it here, and you lock it up, and that's it. Now follow me. So I have to do this. Open this, so good security, right? We're on the third floor. This is my key, and it's 301. And yeah, look, security system. <laughs> no, this place is like really legit. You know, there's no crime here in Japan. It's like almost non-existent. But I like the, the security of this place. It's like really nice, that it's comfortable, it's everything's safe. I rented this place on Airbnb, so definitely check out the link below. And let me show you my units right here. Really cool. There's two locks. So, do the double lock, right? So open that one. Open that one. Bam. And here we go. Turn on the lights. One thing you have to always do in Japan is leave your shoes. So take off your shoes right away. This is part of Japanese etiquette. Always take off your shoes. It's really disrespectful if you walk into somebody's house with your shoes on. Like, you never do that. So here we go. This is the kitchenette, as you can see. Here we have a faucet. Here we can make some eggs. We got cups, coffee cups. We have a microwave. This is for tea, right? We have a small fridge, freezer, fridge. Very nice. Then over here, we have a trash can and a recycling. Just gotta move this. Trash can recycling. A smaller closet. This is where you can keep your shoes. This is where you can have your umbrella in case it rains. Very nice. And then look at this bathroom. Wow, I love it. Like, so much technology here. I don't even know, there's so many buttons. And then over here, we have a washer, dryer. It's a washer and a dryer in one. Very nice. Towels, so my towel's here before I take a shower now. And then over here, let me turn on the light. Right? Oh, nice. And this is my shower. Very nice. So as you can see, just put this inside, right? Oh, you don't put it inside? <laughs> so you just use it from here, take a shower. I love it, it's really sleek, as you can see. Very modern, floor is nice. And now let me show you the toilet, because if you guys didn't know, Japan has the most luxurious toilets in the world. Come, come. They're like always heated. I don't know if this one's heated, but I haven't sat down on it yet. It's heated, it's heated toilet. And then there's so many buttons, and that's like bidet buttons, right? So you have a bunch of different things here. So the bidet moves. And then you also have a little sink right here to wash your hands. So here we have it, our studio apartment, right? You got a big bed here. This looks like a queen size bed. It might be, a, yeah, it's queen size bed. We have a twin size bed and then we have a couch. Very relaxing. I also have this, it tells me the temperature outside. 16 degrees Celsius, really cold. And yeah, I mean, this is everything I need, right? It's super nice. I recommend coming here as a couple or maybe like two, three friends. You can definitely fit through maybe two people, a person and then another person. So maybe four people can come here. And if you travel with a family, the same thing. I mean, it's, it'll be a little tight for family. It really depends how big the family is. But I really, really like this place. As you can see, really clean. And this is how it is in Japan. I mean, everything's super nice, clean, and legit. Oh, and let me show you here, the closet. So, in case it gets too cold, I got more blankets, got more pillows, I can hang my clothes. Unfortunately, I'm only here two nights, so I don't really have time to hang my clothes. I'd rather not do that. And yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed my apartment tour. I'll see you in the morning. Konnichiwa, everyone. Wow, I slept like a baby last night. It was so cold in Kyoto, it was like negative two Celsius, 28 Fahrenheit. So what I did is I made the room really warm. I turned on the heater, I got an extra blanket, and I was like in a super hot cocoon. It was amazing. 
it's still like 35 uh, Fahrenheit, so like two or three Celsius. And it actually was snowing for a little bit this morning. As you can see, it looks a little wet outside, but it's all good. Let's go inside. Oh yeah, and by the way, they also have a terrace here. I didn't show you guys this earlier, but nice terrace, right? Amazing. And now, let's go see the neighborhood. Wow, it is snowing, it is snowing. Look at this, the snow's coming down. A little bit, it's so much though. It's everywhere, oh my God, I haven't seen snow in a long time. Is it landing on me yet? <laughs> Woo, right there. <laughs> the thing is that I'm from Miami, so whenever I see snow, it's like, wow, it, it never happened. It's, I'm so fortunate for it to happen on this trip. This is amazing. And yeah, so the first thing I wanna do is show you the best part about this place is that I have coffee right outside of my, of my apartment. It's amazing. And if you guys didn't know, there's over 2.4 million like liquid vending machines in Japan. 2.4 million. Right here we have one. We have another one right there. And yeah, they're, they're basically just liquid. So you have coffee, you have tea. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna get the boss coffee. Coffee, boss, see that? Coffee boss, that's what I always get. I get the cold version because I just I can't really deal with the hot one. It's like it's just a little too hot, and they have multiple variations. So they have like this one, these are all special rainbow, uh, black. I'm going with this one, guys. It's 100 yen. And right there, we got some coffee. Oh, the snow's really starting to come down now. So let me show you this right here. We have like a little Buddhist shrine. It's amazing, you see that all over Kyoto. And if you guys didn't know, Kyoto was the capital of Japan for like a thousand years, from like the 8th century to the 20th century. And yeah, this place has a lot of history. They are, they have a lot of temples and shrines. I think there's over 2,000. So if you really wanted to see them all, you would have to live here for a few years. Wow, it really is coming down right now. This is just so beautiful. And let me post up so much to have my coffee because I need to have coffee right now. And then right here we have a convenience store, so Family Mart, uh, you know, Family Mart, 7-Eleven, and Lawson, they're like everywhere in the country. There's thousands of them. I mean, you can see them like every two or three blocks you can see a convenience store. And this street, once we get to the end of it, is like a huge temple right here. Looks really, really old. Probably like the 15th century. And then we're gonna go left, and over there you're gonna see that's Kyoto Station, Kyoto Tower. These are the most important places in the city in terms of transportation. And whoa, I mean, this is stop snowing. Somewhere and drink my coffee. It's like, I need it, I need it right now. Wow, this is gorgeous, look at that. Beautiful. I love that there's so much history here. I had to like, get out of the snow for a second. There was nowhere for me to sit, so I sat here next to the temple. Wow, premium boss. Very strong coffee, incredible. And let me tell you about this temple. This is Higashi Honjanji, officially known as the Shinshu Honbayu. It is the mother temple of the Shinshu Otani branch of Judo Shinshu, AKA Skin Buddhism. It is one of the largest Buddhist denominations in Japan. The temple is gorgeous. That is real Japan right there. So when you stay here, definitely go visit it. And now we're walking into like the more like downtown area here where Kyoto Tower is. Kyoto Tower is the tallest structure here in Kyoto. It's like a steel tower at the 100 meter mark. They have an observation deck and it stands at 130 meters tall. So I think like 300, like 300 feet. The reason why it's the highest structure is because here in Kyoto they have a height restriction for buildings. Nothing's built over like six, seven stories. So no skyscrapers here like Tokyo, right? And as you can see, I mean, it's becoming bustling. Everybody's waking up. It's 7.30 in the morning. Sorry guys, I wake up so early. And as you can see, more vending machines. More vending machines, awesome. And this is the center of Kyoto. Beautiful. And then right now we're inside the center of Kyoto. And here we have 
Kyoto Station, the biggest station in Kyoto and one of the biggest in the country. It is massive. They have like a skywalk, they have restaurants. It's just huge. From here, you can take the bullet train from here, you can take the metro, the subway, the any train. And we also have Kyoto Tower, and that is the tallest structure in Kyoto at 130 meters high. And they also have an observation deck at 100 meters. And yeah, guys, that was my incredible apartment slash neighborhood tour here in Kyoto. I love this studio apartment, centrally located, lots of attractions, and yeah, just an awesome place to stay. If you love this video, guys, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment below, and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in the next travel food adventure in Japan. What's good everyone? This is David Hoffman from David's Been Here coming at you from freezing snow in Kyoto, Japan. It's really, really cold right now. It's like negative one Celsius, 30 degrees Fahrenheit. And yeah, this morning what I want to do is I want to take you to eat a traditional Japanese breakfast. Here in Japan, it's a little different from anywhere else in the world. Breakfast is either from a convenience store or from one of the local uh, like Japanese diner chains. I've already done one. I've done the convenience store route. So I'm going to go today to Tsukiya. And this place has over 2,000 locations in Japan and they're famous for the gudan, which is basically like a, a beef bowl. So it's beef, rice, onions, and it looks amazing, really filling. The regular size bowl costs 350 yen, which is $3.50, and there's no tipping. So it's really, really cheap, it's really, really quick. And then after we eat, I'm gonna take you all the way up there to the Kyoto Tower, the tallest structure in Kyoto. They have an observation deck at the 100 meter mark. So let's go inside and eat a delicious beef ball. Are you guys ready? Let's go. Okay, so the way it works here at Sukiya is that they have tables and they also have a counter area. I'm sitting at the table because it's way more private, a lot easier for me to film. There's like a few reasons why people love this place. It's because they use like delicious ingredients, not too fatty, not too fatty beef. Their vegetables and rice are like top notch quality. And then they have multiple different sizes. They have the mini, they have the nami, which is medium, which is the most popular. They have the chumui, which is medium, but a little bigger. It's like 1.5 times the amount of meat and slightly less rice. They have the omori, which is large. They have the tukumori, which is extra large. And they have the mega, which is XX large, which is three times the meat and extra rice. I mean, that is a huge bowl. And what I'm going with is the pork miso and curry soup. So it comes with the, you know, the bowl, beef, rice, onions. It comes with a raw egg on the side. So you just dump that on top. So it also comes with a curry soup. Look at all those bowls. Very cheap and very fast. I got in here at 8.45. Let's see how long it takes me to eat and get out. So here we have it, nice beef bowl. Got the rice, the beef, oh it looks so juicy and tender. Got the onions and we have the egg right here, gotta crack it. And then we have like that miso curry soup. Mmm, looks phenomenal. Okay guys, so this is how we're gonna do it. We're gonna first crack the egg. They give you this so you can crack it here, right? But I'm gonna crack it and put it straight in, so. Nice. And then, what you do, you go like this and you mix it up. Mm. They love raw eggs with the rice. I mean, it looks amazing. It tastes really good. Oh, this is so amazing. Mm. Beef, nice, juicy. Mix it in there. You should definitely learn how to use chopsticks before coming to Japan. Oh my God. Mmm. Mmm. Oh wow, the beef is so juicy. Mmm, looks the egg. Mmm. So yummy. Mmm, very filling as well. I mean, obviously a lot of, a lot of rice. And this rice is like sticky rice. Let me show you. All right there. Look at that. Mmm, nice beef. This beef is phenomenal. Just gotta mix it together with the rice though. As you can see, like, it's yoki, rice. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep mixing. Gotta try to mix it as much as possible. 
Mm. Oh yeah. The only problem is that they put a lot of rice. And it's really, really like I think it's like 70% is rice. I'm not really a huge fan of eating raw eggs, but this you can definitely do it. Oh look at that! Wow. This is so good. I get this every day. Like I really can. Like filling up on rice, huh? What I highly recommend is bring some soy sauce. And then you're gonna mix it. So we got soy, we got egg, we got some beef, onions. Mm. I love the soy mix. Oh wow. So next up we're gonna try this curry miso soup. Oh man, it has some pork, onions, some herbs. Mmm. Oh, this is great. Mmm. Oh yeah. That broth is so fantastic. Mm. Very nice. Mm, incredible. Look at all that. You have like a radish in here. Mm. The pork is nice and chewy, nice and fatty. Mm. Oh, man. It's like a. It's like the ultimate miso soup. It's really, really good. It's a really big miso soup. It's like a miso soup on steroids with the amount of things that are in here. And once you finish all the ingredients, then you just slurp on it. Mm. I decided I had to have this combo because it's so cold outside and I wanted to warm up. Mm. So I'm just gonna finish the rice bowl and get really full. With the cold outside, you gotta be full because if not, you're gonna be really hungry. And that's not good in the cold. This is an incredible beef bowl. The soy sauce really changed the flavor. Mm. I love how the sticky rice really absorbs the egg and the soy sauce. Mm. It's just like bathed in it. All right. Last bite. Mm. Wow, there's so much rice in here. Done. Time is it? We've been in here 20 minutes. Ordered, eight, and I'm gonna pay. What's the total? The total is 550 yen. That's five US dollars for this monster of a breakfast. All right, that was a really, really filling breakfast. Huge delicious bowl, I mean, it was delicious, it really was. Yummy, yummy rice, really sticky, with the egg drilled through. The best part was when I poured the soy sauce, but I also love the soup. The soup was really nice, especially for this weather, it's really cold outside. And now we're gonna go over here and go up to Kyoto Tower, the tallest tower in Kyoto. They have an observation deck. Let's go over there. Before we go up to the tower, I need a coffee. So I'm here at one of the 2.4 million vending machines here in Japan, and I'm gonna go with a cold coffee. I love this brand, The Boss, and The Boss Black is like the strongest one. I've tried like five or six different ones already, and I get always the cold one. Even though it's cold, I like cold coffee. I don't like it when it's boiling hot, because these, when they come out, they're like boiling hot. So let me get this one right here, Black Boss. 100 yen. Right there, black boss. It's gotta post up really fast. Open this coffee. It's like a triple shot. Really good, really strong. Woo! Get energized. Here we go, Kyoto Tower observation deck opens at 9 a.m., closes at 9 p.m., last admission is at 8.40 p.m. Here we go. <sighs> observation ticket. I gotta take this off and I'm freaking too hot. Hello. Hi. How you doing? Hey, how you doing? How much is it? 
$7.70 for one adult. Okay. The cost to enter the observation deck is $7.70, so that's like $7.70. High school students, $6.20. Elementary school, $5.20. Preschool, three years older, over $1.50. People with disabilities, $3.50. So there you go. Those are all the prices. And here we go. Observation deck is right. Hey, hello, Konnichiwa. Well, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Once we got to the 11th floor, we had to change to this elevator. And as you can see, here we are. We're going up 65, 70, all the way to 100. Wow, it is snowing right now. Look, you can see the snow. Incredible. This observation looks very nice. It's small. It goes in a full circle. Here you have like an interactive map. So we can go here. Let's see what's this. Oh, it's a temple. Okay, what's that? It's an aquarium. What's that? Cool. And do they have a language? Can I change it? No, I don't see the language change, but <laughs> it's fine. They also have some binoculars right here. Nikon. So we do this. Oh wow. Oh, you can see really far with this. Man, the snow's coming down. <laughs> and they have these right here. Some big boys. Whoa. Wow. This is awesome. I love observation decks. I visited the one in Tokyo, the Tokyo Sky Tree, and that's obviously 350 meters high, so that's like three times the height of this. But this is the tallest structure in Kyoto, so it gives you a vantage point over the entire city. It's like a valley in between these mountains, right? So you can see mountains over there, mountains over there, lots of low rises. You can see the trains coming, the bullet trains coming in right there. Incredible. And that's Kyoto Station. I love that this is such a small observation deck, but at the same time you get to see everything that is Kyoto. And right here, as you can see right here, it'll tell you what you see in front of you. So Moyen Temple, National Museum, 1.4 kilometers. So if you look straight that way, you see it. I see Haruko Shrine. Oh wow, there I see it. Kiyome Temple. Wow, you see a huge boot over there. The snow is starting to go away. The sun's coming out. And wow, if you look really far in the distance in the mountains, you see that the mountains are full of snow. They're like completely white. And yeah, this kid's having a lot of fun here. <laughs> Everybody's using the binoculars and using these uh, and using these interactive maps to see where everything is. And per personally, I love observation decks. I like to go to them everywhere I go in the world. Tokyo Sky Tree was amazing. This is also amazing though. It's different, it's not as high, but you definitely, you definitely will enjoy it. Come here with your family, see it. And yeah, let me just, let me enjoy this. Oh wow. I can't believe how many buildings there are here. It just never ends, it's like a sea of buildings. This takes like something like half an hour to see it. Get some photos, get some video, just enjoy it. Come here with your family or come here alone like I did. Yeah, and definitely add this to the top of your bucket list for things to do in Kyoto. It's a must visit. Tallest structure, highest point in the city. And yeah, if you liked going up to observation decks like I do, I did the Tokyo Sky Tree, which is amazing, four times higher than this, but this is the only one here, so I had to do it. And guys, if you love this video, please give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment below, and subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. I'll see you in the next food and travel adventure in Japan. Peace. Hey, what's up everyone? This is David Hoffman from David's Been Here in beautiful, sunny, cold Kyoto, Japan. And today what I wanna do is I wanna take you to see some historical sites and I wanna go eat some lunch. And what I'm thinking for lunch is Japanese hot pot or we just go traditional sushi. I don't know yet, we'll figure that out. And where we're at right now is the Kiyamazura Dera Temple. This is a Buddhist temple in Eastern Kyoto and it's part of UNESCO. And before we get to the temple, there's this street, and this is like a very touristic spot by the way. So this street is full of souvenir shops. We have some ice cream. What else? We got some restaurants here. I mean, you can get some matcha. 
so many souvenirs. You got hats, chopsticks, like super like elegant chopsticks. You have some people like dressing up like geishas, right? I mean, that's a big thing here in Kyoto. I think I'm gonna get uh, ice cream. Maybe get an ice cream here. What do you think, guys? Ooh, matcha ice cream. Let's see. Oh man, matcha, matcha, matcha. I love matcha. There's so many things though. The street is packed with people, lots of tourists. I don't know, it doesn't look like there's that many Japanese tourists. It looks more like Chinese tourists, Japanese, American, I mean, big mix here. Yeah, there's a lot of people, a lot, a lot of people. Really cool souvenir as well. I mean, I like some of these t-shirts. I might buy one. Uh, the Hello Kitty was funny over there. It's a little cold, but it's heating up. It's still really early. It's like 10.40 in the morning. But I'm still looking for a good ice cream. I really want a matcha. Uh, green tea or sweet potato. Yeah. Mochi. Ah, mochi. <laughs> no, I have one more. Okay, please. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, my God. Delicious. So I'm going to get the black sesame with honey. It costs 300 yen. All right, here we go. Oh, my God. Mmm. How good this is. Mmm, nice cracker on top. I love the black sesame honey. It's a little nutty, very sweet. Mmm, it is so freaking good. Mmm, I really, really need this. I haven't had ice cream yet here in Japan. Mmm, and look, look what's behind me. UNESCO World Heritage Site. And this ice cream is phenomenal. Black sesame with honey, you have to try this. So now you know where the trash can is. Do not litter in Japan. Do not litter. Now let's go explore this UNESCO World Heritage Site. Wow, this temple is gorgeous. So beautiful. I'm loving the colors. Oh, orange, green, some blue in there. Ah, got lots of exercise here. And you gotta be really careful. The ground's a little wet because it just snowed. You should definitely be in really good shape for this temple. Whew, lots and lots and lots of stairs. Oh, I'm getting winded and I'm in good shape. What's up, man? Oh my god. Here we go. As you can see, there's a bell here that everybody's ringing and how it works is basically you go up to it, you throw some money in, you ring the bell, and then you make your wish. I, I mean, that's how I think it is because everybody, once they do it, then they do a little prayer and they leave. Okay, so this temple is huge. Right here we have an entrance to another piece of the temple and that actually costs 400 yen to go into. And here's a little bit about the temple. It originated in the year 778 when the monk and Chin enshrined an image of the cannon on the mountain overlooking the Otawana Taki Falls. Later in 798, the distinguished general Sakunoa no Temura built a Buddha hall here, following which the Kamazuta Temple came under the official patronage of the Emperor Kanmu. Thank you. So 400? Yes. So it's the main hall, right? Yes, this is the main hall. Inside. Yeah. Two, Inside. Two minutes walking from here. Two minutes walking? Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm definitely going into the, the main hall. It's 400 yen. I asked the guy what it was. He was like, that's the main hall. You have to visit. You just had to go in and I can film, he said. All right, guys, so I got my English brochure here. You know, it's located on a splendid spot called Otowasan in the mountain, okay? So what else do we know about this place? It's uh, the main sanctuary is called the Hondo, and it's very unique among temple architecture and even a model of wooden buildings in our country, so in Japan. Especially one known for so-called Hirozo no Butai, the so the floor basically and the railings are firmly supported by long artistic pillars and are refined hawadaboki roof. Okay, so it's basically cypress barks. Nice, and it's starting to snow like intensely right now. Wow, this is just gorgeous. <gasps> oh, amazing, so much snow, so beautiful. All right, let's go inside the shrine. I need to see this. Oh. That main hall is amazing. As you saw, it is like some of the best woodwork I've ever seen. Some of the floors, the pieces are just one big slab. And over here, we can walk around, just walk outside. It actually stopped snowing, luckily. I don't want to ruin my camera. 
We're gonna walk around here and see if we can get a better view of the temple and of the hall. Okay, so right here we have the main hall. As you can see, it's covered with this huge tarp. See the wood, wood like piles, right? Huge wooden slabs. And then right across from here, we have epic views looking over Kyoto. Kyoto Tower right there, the tallest structure in Kyoto. I went there this morning and yeah, just beautiful views. The air up here is just amazing. And yeah, I love how it is here in winter. And that's it. We saw the temple. Oh, I'm super happy I came because it was a little bit out of the way. I had to take a, a 1,000 yen taxi ride from my place. I would, it would have taken me like 40 minutes to walk, so I decided, you know, it's easier to take the taxi. And yeah, I mean, wow. Oh man, more views, more epic views. Now the only dilemma is what to eat for lunch. Hot pot, sushi, I don't know, maybe some sake. How about all the above? <laughs> All right, I have to find some place around here. Let me see what is around here. And uh, yeah, I'll update you in a second. Sorry, I'm like extremely tired today. It's been a, it's been a long trip already. Five impactful days, super energetic days. All right, so I've been thinking about where to go for lunch and I really didn't want to leave this area because the city's big and the only way for me to get anywhere will take me around an hour, you know, get either get a taxi or get on a bus or just try to get to the train. So I decided, you know, let me look up what's good around here. And I found a website that shows me the five most popular places and one place looks amazing. It's called Okabeya and they make traditional Japanese food and it's like yotofu, which is boiled tofu, yoba, which is a tofu skin, and tempura of nine Namafu, which is highly refined weak gluten that is combined with short grain mochi rice flour. We had to walk on that super crazy pedestrian street again. So many people. And the restaurant is in this tiny little alley that cuts off from that street. Where is it? I think this is it. All right, so here we go, Okobeya. Let's see, tofu don. So 1,040, 1,540 for that. Tons of vegetable tempura, Japanese clear soup, rice bowl. So this is a rice bowl dish consisting of tofu and, sim and simmered minced chicken. What to get? I'm definitely getting sake. It's only six seventy, so like seven bucks. Oh man, they have a pretty big menu. It's not just tofu, but they're famous for their tofu. So that's what I'm gonna get. Tofu don. Done. And first things first. In every Japanese restaurant, we get to clean our hands. Little wet towel. I'm keeping my hat on because my hair is like crazy. And what is this? It's everything. Yodufo, Sakura. Okay, so I'll go with that. Yodufo Fuji. So 2160, 21 bucks. Perfect. And then I'm also go with the sake. Sake. Cold sake. Cold sake. Yeah, cold sake. Arigato. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, so we have a bunch of different things here. We have tofu with wasabi. We have tofu here in the middle, and what she did is she put it on this like little sizzle right here. Just turn it on, and boom. As you can see, it's like steaming. And what you do is you take this out, put it here, and then you put some sauce on, you put some condiments. Here we got the sake, right? We need some right now. A little bit of sake. Oh, nice and cold sake. And they also give you tea. Woo, a little hot. Hot tea. Oh, and it's more. Okay, rice? Rice. Pickles. Pickles? Yeah. Sushi mdo. Sushi mdo? Sushi mdo. Sushi mdo, okay. Uh, vegetable tempura. Vegetable tempura, yes. okay. And just no, no sauce, just eat. Just eat? Yes. Okay, and then this? In a minute. Um, a few minutes? Kanpai. Okay guys, so they brought a few more things. They brought like fried tofu on a stick, right? Some rice. Some, uh, some ginger and some pickles. And then they also brought some tempura. So let me tell you what this is. This is yodufo, which is a type of warm tofu in hot pot. This is one of the best and typical ways to eat tofu. Suitable time for eating is when the tofu core is just warmed up. That's basically this, right? Everything else is just sides. So I just grabbed one of the tofus, put it here, put the sauce, and then got some of those herbs. Let's try it. Oh, this thing is amazing. Mmm, mmm, so soft. Mmm, I like the little, it's like a little soy sauce. Mmm, there's herbs. I think there's uh, some onion here. Mmm, very nice. Oh, very light. Has like a spongy consistency. So I'm gonna grab one again. Oh, I can't pick it up like that, no way. 
So we gotta buy this. Ah, boom. Wow. Okay, so put it here. All right. Put some of that soy sauce. Bam, right there. Get some of those herbs. Mmm. That was way too hot. <laughs> I need like socket just to go down. Oh, that was good. Really nice. Mmm. Next I'm gonna have some of this. I think this is like a pickle. I don't know if it's ginger, but mmm. It's like pickles. And we're nice to it. They said this was pickle, but it looks like kelp. It's almost like a pickled seaweed or something. Mmm. That was pretty good. Now the best thing to do because I just noticed how hot that thing was is just get some of it. Alright, I'm gonna get two of these, just take them out. Just let them sit there for a bit. Probably put some of the soy sauce just drizzle on top right there. Leave it alone. I don't wanna burn my mouth again. Hmm, next up we got some tempura. She said not to put this with sauces at all. So this is like I think it's an eggplant tempura. Hmm. What I like about this tempura is that it's not like too deep fried. Mmm, light batter. And then right here we have like sushito peppers. Very nice. I'm just gonna eat all these tempuras right now. Mmm, oh, sweet potato. Mmm, really good. So here we have like tofu on a stick with some like marmalade. I don't know exactly what that is. Okay, here we go. Mmm, tofu is nice. And, like thick, not too soft. Mmm, but the marmalade. It's almost like a cheesy marmalade. I love that one. So we get some more of this stuff. Oh yeah, it's so good. It's still really hot, like too hot. Mmm. Mmm. Next up, I'm gonna try this wasabi tofu. Let's pick it up really fast. This tofu is different. It's sweeter, with a little bit of spice. I didn't know there was that much of a world in tofu, right? And here, what is this? Like a potato. This tofu looks a little different. It has more like a brownish tint to it and on top we have this like thing that's like pinkish it looks good mmm this one was nice and thick very sweet felt like there was some garlic but it wasn't like garlic because I've had garlic tofu before and it's like way too much garlic that was really good there's like a pickle right here nice shrimp right here got the head got the tail gotta take it apart now take it off break it apart take off the tail Mm, very succulent. And I haven't even tried the rice. I'm gonna put some sauce in the rice. Soy sauce all day. Nice sticky rice. Oh, but I need some more wasabi. So the best thing to do is just get all the soy sauce remaining from the tofu bowl. Mix it in. There's actually a little bit of tofu in here. Mm. So I just put all the tofu here because I think it's getting way too hot. Look at all that. Oh, it looks so good. It's light. It's, it's a little bland, but that's why you put some of this on it, right? Put a lot of that. And then I'm just gonna dump all this on it. Sake, sake, sake. Oh, this bottle is like nothing, it's like air. I really love sake, guys. Like, and they give it to you in small bottles, so this is nothing. Like, I can drink this and feel nothing. Now it's like it's basically bathing in soy sauce. Oh yeah, way better like that. Mm. I mean, it's not too hot now, it's been sitting there for a while. If you guys don't like tofu, I'm sure you still like this one because it's so freaking phenomenal. Mm. I thought I wouldn't get full off tofu, but pretty damn full. It literally wasn't a lot of food, but I'm ridiculously full. I feel like people in Japan drink more tea than they drink water. They never offer water. Wow, that tofu was really filling. Man, I feel good though. It was uh, 28.30, so like $28 to eat that ginormous meal. And I also came with sake. And yeah, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna look for some Kyoto coffee. They say it's very different from any other coffee in Japan. So let's see. So this street I'm walking down is just basically souvenir shops. They have a lot of cool stuff. They have some like Japanese marmalade, but most of it's just souvenir shops. They have really nice stuff that, I mean, I would buy for my kids, but just way too expensive. T-shirts for like 3,000. So basically what I spent for lunch on a t-shirt, I don't think it's worth it. I'd rather buy them something that's like more Japanese than a t-shirt that just says something in Japanese. Wow, this is like a really nice restaurant. 
And one thing I really love about this area is that all these houses are like traditional houses. Obviously, no one lives there anymore because it's now a commercial area. But, I mean, it just looks so authentic and so like real Japan, more like Imperial Japan over like the modern Japan. Yeah, man, there's so many souvenir shops. This is like ridiculous. After walking around for a bit, I found this coffee shop called Garakuta, and they make like awesome coffee. They have slow drip coffee, which is what I got. Straight black, no sugar, no milk. They also roast coffee here, so roast the beans. And yeah, nice cozy spot. Very warm right now in here. It's a little toasty. I just watched how she poured the hot water into the, the powder of the coffee, and then it just like dripped down into this cup. Mm. Ooh, hot, hot. <laughs> nice strong coffee. Black as night. Mm, delicious. This is exactly what I need right now to wake up. Yeah, so we explored the temple. We ate a delicious tofu feast. I mean, so many different tofu things tofu hot pot, tofu wasabi, a tofu skewers with like some marmalade, and then the rice, tempura. I mean, everything overall, that was one of the best meals I've had in Japan. It was very different. I mean, I just love tofu. I'm a big tofu guy. And yeah, I mean, it was such an experience. And this area is beautiful, as you saw. I mean, lots of old houses, very commercial, obviously, because it's, it has a temple, so that's like the main attraction. Everybody comes here, they buy stuff, they buy food on the street, they go see the temple, they go to a restaurant, they have some coffee, and that's basically what they do here, you know? So guys, if you love this video, please give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment below, and subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. I'll see you in the next travel food adventure somewhere in Japan. Peace. What's up guys, David Hoffman here from David's Bin here in Kyoto, Japan. Today we're gonna do something a little different. I'm taking you from Kyoto over to Osaka. Osaka is a big city, it's really close from here. I think it's a 30 minute train ride. It costs like 560 yen, so like $5.60 to get there. And if you guys didn't know, this is part of the Kansai area, which is Osaka, Kyoto, and Kobe. Kobe is famous for Kobe beef. And unfortunately, I didn't have enough time to go there. I have like four days. So I took the bullet train from Tokyo all the way over here to Kyoto Station. It was like $180, but it's the fastest way to get here. Very convenient. And then from here, I walked over, five minute walk to my Airbnb. I gotta thank my boy, Tal, the traveling class for connecting me with the owner. It was an amazing place, perfectly situated for everything I had to do here in this city. I visited so many temples and shrines. I ate so much food. And if you didn't know, this city was the capital of Japan for over a thousand years. There's so many temples. I think there's like 2,000 temples and the food is ridiculous. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna go into the station. I'm gonna buy my train ticket and then we're gonna go to Osaka. Let's go. So I'm taking a fast train, it was 5.60. I have to go to track number five. Okay, let's see, how do we get there? The only problem about traveling with the trains and this huge luggage is the goddamn huge luggage, it's too big. This is not a good spot to be. <laughs> Everybody's just running into me. Dude, this, so this spot sucks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna like fly through here some way. Come on, everybody. <laughs> I need a seat. <laughs> Something I need to mention is that when you get on trains or metro or anything here in Japan, you gotta be really, really quiet. As you can tell people like to talk on trains, you gotta like be shh. The best thing to do is put like earphones on and just hear music or talk, or I mean, basically enter entertainment, but don't talk. Pretty quick, smooth, it was like more like a 40 minute ride. We arrived here in Osaka, and now what I have to do is I have to try to see which 
which train to get to go to Don Tobori. And that's where I'm staying. I'm staying in basically like the most popular area. I'm staying in Airbnb there. I don't even know where to go right now. Okay, so I ran into a security guard and I asked her, hey, where's Don Tobori? Which, which train should just like go down? So I guess I'm going to the subway line right now. What is this? Oh my god, there's so many people here in Osaka. This is insane. This is a huge city. I, mean, I don't know, there's like a million people here, for real. Oh man, this has been pretty intense. There's so many people and it's just a mission to get to the subway. I'm like literally walking like a mile and there's so many like little restaurants, these cafes. And yeah, you have to go like far, far, far. I think it was, it would have been a better idea to get a taxi and go straight to my place, but the taxi would have been like 30 bucks. So I wanted to save a little bit, but damn, what an experience, huh? Insane. Alright, so we're going to platform one. It cost me 230 uh, yen for the ticket and it's Namba Station, Station Namba. And thank God there's somebody there helping me because it's a little different here. You put the money in first and then you choose your fare. So it's 230 yen, so $2.30. Platform one and it's Mido Siju line. There was no escalator, so I literally had to carry all this stuff by myself. My hand just broke. My god, and we're here and uh, this is the Umeda station and we're going to Namba. Four stops. Four stops. That was so quick. That was six minutes to do four stations fast. So I just stopped some random guy and I asked him, you know, where is this? <laughs> and then he found out that it was gate 32 or exit 32. And right now we're at exit nine. So I have to walk straight down this like long corridor that is just like never ending uh, shops of food. Man, they love food here. They really do. I mean, this is like a snack place. Wow, chocolate. They're also selling a bunch of clothing here, purses. And it's, it's like a city. Each each station, each like major station is a city. Tokyo Station, Kyoto Station, Osaka Station. They're really, 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 really intense. Um, but yeah, 32. Let's go to 32. <laughs> okay, guys. So, finally, 32 exit. But the guy told me, he's like, sorry, but there's no, there's no lift. So there's no elevator, no escalator. Just break here, back. Oh my God, how are we gonna do this? I have to put you guys down for a second. Oh my god, we did it. We did it. We're here in Dondobori, right? Now I just gotta look at my Google Maps. When in doubt, ask for directions. So I asked, they told me which street it was. I'm going down this street, I have to pass the street, make a left, make it the next left, pass the street, make a right, and we get there. So now you know, if you're coming to this apartment where I'm staying, when you get to Namba Station in Osaka, you go to 32, you come all the way over here, cross this street, wow, nice, and it's freezing right now, it's like colder than Kyoto, my god, my ears are frozen, Ugh, my hands are broken, I gotta say, I mean, what an adventure. The way it works here in Japan when you rent an Airbnb is usually you get there and there's no one there greeting you, obviously. You'll find the key, now the key's always in a lockbox, and the lockbox is somewhere this one is by a bicycle so it's on the bicycle so number okay and then it's in here there we go <laughs> locks right here now i can't tell you the pin obviously we did it i got the key i got the key oh my god sorry that was such a delay i didn't notice there was that many locks in there so many locks. Now we have to go in. It says for the entrance, please insert the room key into the call. Okay, here we go. Let's do it, let's do it. And we are 13. Yes, we're here. We're in Osaka. All right, let's quickly get up there. We did it, guys. We're in Osaka. Tontori. That is like the nightlife district. Lots of people, lots of street food. I cannot wait. We need to go get a sake right now. Oh, my back hurts. Okay guys, so I'm here in 1304 and I gotta unlock it. Let's see, let's see. 
Oh, there we go. Awesome. Woo. So here we go, my Airbnb. Yeah. All right, guys. So we did it. We traveled from Kyoto to Osaka. It was a it was a fun journey. I mean, only 30 minute train ride or 40 minute train ride, but getting there and then getting here was a little intense. And yeah, I mean, that's how easy it is to travel between Kyoto and Osaka. I mean, very easy. If you're staying in Kyoto, then come over here for a day trip. That's that's very doable. I mean, you come really early in the morning, you can get the whole day here and then you go. I highly recommend staying in both cities, doing it correctly. I'm staying here for two nights. I cannot wait. I'm gonna go out now to Dontobori, to the area and eat some street food. And this view from my apartment is ridiculous. Look at this. Skyscrapers in Osaka. I love it. Well guys, if you love this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment below, and subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. I'll see you in the next travel food adventure somewhere in the world. Peace.